Okay. Thank you all for, for coming. Uh, it's always hard to present after lunch and also to, to listen to presentations after lunch. <laughs> so I will be presenting, presenting Creophone PT, which is a database uh, concerning the lexicon and phonology of Portuguese-based creoles all over the world. And this work is born from the collaboration between, but not only, <laughs> Carlos Silva, which is me, I'm a phonology and the lecturer of phonology in the Master of Linguistics at the University of Porto, and Luis Trigo, which is a computational linguist and data scientist, and we are like-minded concerning uh, citizen science collaboration, digital methods, and interdisciplinary studies. So, for those who are not familiar, uh, Creoles are contact languages formed by one European language spoken by a minority and one or more non-European languages, African, Asian or American, spoken by the majority of the population of a given community. And uh, the Creole formation happens through, through three stages. First, a uh, prep pigeon, which has just uh, vocabulary items, then the substrate transfer, which gives a grammatical substance to the Creole, and then finally the Creole. So the driving question of the database is how are the phonologies of Portuguese Creoles formed? So Creoles were formed during European colonial expansion. Um, here is the map of the Portuguese versus Spanish uh, colonial territories. And then we had the, the French and the English and the Dutch expansion, so the locations of the Creoles correspond to the former locations of the colonial powers. So now, diving into the project, uh, there are several academic reasons that led to the formation of this database. Although there was already a database on Creole language structures, which is APIX, uh, hosted by the Max Planck Institute, uh, of 120-something features, only seven features are phonological, so we thought that phonology should have a little more attention. Uh, moreover, theoretical phonologists are not normally interested in describing these languages, the linguists that go to the field are not phonologists. Normally, they are, they are specialists in semantics or syntax. And these languages lack um, phylogenetic classification, which is a, a problem. Then there are more uh, general or social reasons to this database, because most of the data concerning Creole languages uh, is in close access and on the other hand, these languages are endangered, so it's urgent to describe them. So the, um, this project started uh, when I was a visiting student at the University of Neuchâtel in Switzerland, and we studied the stability of consonants in Creoles, and found that the most stable consonants are the most frequent worldwide, and that slavery situations have a, a negative impact on language transfer and stability. But these results are based on just 30 words per creole, which is not much, obviously, so we needed to expand the data set. And I heard it this morning uh, that a problem within the di digital humanities is the lack of human resources. So we thought, why don't we use students as human resources <laughs> while giving them uh, also soft skills for their work? So uh, in the master course uh, in the phonology seminar, we implement, uh, implemented project-based learning methodology um, in order for the students to develop linguistic data collection capacities, so they knew how to prepare and analyze phonetic and phonological data to 
familiarize them with data processing methods and also to stimulate uh, research uh, on underexplored areas of linguistics. So we first produced a research protocol which they should follow very strictly. Um, first we presented the rationale, so why, then the data collection methods, what, and a bit of how, and the data processing methods, how, with a bit of what. Uh, this is uh, an example of uh, language metadata collection. So for each Creole, the, the students should fill a table like this. This, this is the example table. Uh, and as you see, there are linguistic variables, such as the name of the language and the language contact. And there are also geographical variables, such as area, and historical variables, such as major, uh, first major settlement and end of influence. So we could then calculate the duration of contact. And this is where the interdisciplinarity comes in. Then they should collect the phonological data. So for many creoles we have data such as the one that is shown in that print screen. So completely unreadable uh, without processing of course, be uh, before processing and the students should fulfill a table with language, source word, which is the word in Creole, target word, the word in Portuguese, then the orthography in Portuguese, and the translation, and of course the reference. The words should be of Portuguese etymology, they should belong to the core vocabulary, so Swedish lists, and they should be, there should be a criteria for uh, verifiability, so a citable academic source associated to each word. Then we had the description of the variables in the protocol. So first we had data collection, then we had data processing, and we had two stages of data processing. The first stage was uh, the human processing, so we call it annotated variables that the students should annotate manually, and then from the manual annotations we could generate more uh, variables uh, through formulas. After data collection we also proceeded to um, data normalization using regex expressions in Python, so the students could, uh, could uh, contact with Python. And then the output is a GitHub repository, which is in a very initial level of development. We have a folder with the data and a folder with the scripts and the, the markdown file. So within the, the data folder, we have several folders, one folder per Creole, and each folder contains uh, four CSV files, one with the unprocessed data, one with the metadata, one with the data processed for syllables, and one with the data processed for words. And for example, the, the data CSV looks like this, so it's searchable. Then th this was great to use GitHub because uh, the contributions were automatically registered in GitHub. And the students could use their work to get their own results and make their own publications. So they should uh, follow a strict protocol, but then they had freedom to, to publish uh, according to their interests. This is another example result. And then this is the results of the pedagogical inquiries, which shows the student satisfaction with this methodology. And finally, some final remarks. So digital humanities should be a collaborative effort, not only with engineers or had other humanists, humanists, but also with students. Um, and the age can have a positive impact on language preservation. For example, 
Uh, I didn't tell you before, but the database was linked to wiki, uh, wiki data. So, for example, um, Google uses data, uh, data uh, from Wikidata uh, to, for the language in the phone. And, for example, Cap Verdian, which is the Creole from Cape Verde, now appears on the menu of language selection in the, in the smartphones. <laughs> so, thank you for your attention.